Have you ever wanted to fly an entire IFR flight just using your VORs? It's easier than you might think. We're doing an IFR flight today from the Flight Insight home base of College Park, Maryland to Ithaca, New York. In our 172, it should be about a two-hour flight. Not a bad weekend getaway. Looking at Sky Vector, we can see that nearly the entire route can follow Victor Airways, which are usable with only VOR equipment on board. Let's see the route. Starting from College Park, we're going to join Victor 265 and fly that inbound to the Westminster VOR along the 187 radial. A word of caution here, even if you file your flight plan with equipment code slant alpha or anything else that indicates that you don't have GPS equipment, ATC is very likely to assume that you can navigate to the airway yourself and may even give you an instruction to proceed direct to a fix like belts here. That won't really be possible using just VORs because you're going from College Park Airport, which isn't on an airway. The way this particular flight will probably work is that ATC will assign a heading to fly on departure, which will allow you to intercept the airway, at which point you'll be cleared for your own navigation. Still, if you really want to fly this without GPS, you might need to reiterate to ATC this fact since these days it's assumed everyone is GPS capable. So our first navigation is inbound to Westminster along the 187 radial. We'll set the Westminster VOR into Nav1 active 117.9. We'll then set 187 into the VOR receiver. We're flying inbound, so we want 187 to be on the bottom, not the top. Since we're flying inbound on the radial, our heading won't be 187, but it's reciprocal of 007 degrees, so we want that up top. From the Westminster VOR, we fly outbound along its 056 radial, joining Victor 457. To remain on this airway, we're going to be making a small left turn at the Vinny intersection so that now we'd be flying inbound along the 223 radial to a new VOR, Lancaster. We'll set that frequency on the NAV1 standby, 117.3. We can also set it up on the NAV2 and make it active. Let's twist the OBS to set the 223 radial on the number two receiver. Since we're flying inbound on the radial, our course will be its reciprocal, so we put 223 on the bottom. If this gets confusing, putting the radial on the top or the bottom, just remember that what you set on top of the dial should correlate with the course you'll actually be flying. Flying inbound to Lancaster from Vinny requires a roughly northeasterly heading, so should 223 go on top or on bottom? It should go on bottom because that puts its reciprocal 043 degrees up top, which is what we plan to fly on that leg. After the Lancaster VOR, we'll fly outbound from it along its 012 radial, joining Victor 499. Here we've clipped the route together to make it fit the image, but this is a very long segment. You can see from the figure in the box that the airway segment between Lancaster and the next VOR, Binghamton, is 122 miles. This is a long way between two VORs, nearly the extent of their service volume. So note the MEA here, it's 8,000 feet. Now this part of Pennsylvania and New York is in a particularly high elevation area. The Catskills and the Poconos are nearby, but they don't merit such a high MEA. Note the MOCA, the minimum obstruction clearance altitude is just 4,000. The extra height of the MEA is due to the need to be up high to ensure signal coverage from one or both VORs along the entire airway segment here. We're in eastbound flight, so we'll use an odd 1,000, 9,000 foot cruise. The Binghamton VOR is on 122.2. We'll set that up on NAV2 standby for now. So we do have a GPS on this flight, but we're not going to use it, so we'll set it to some other screen. We do have DME displayed on the unit, so we can use that if we want for things like where to change over what we're tracking, but it's not necessary strictly speaking for this flight. As we mentioned, ATC is going to assign us a heading to fly on departure. That'll be runway heading 330 degrees. That'll allow us to chase the needle currently deflected left. Our 330 heading is left of what we have set on the OBS, 007, so we'll be chasing it on that heading, and then once we center the needle, we'll turn right to that heading and start flying inbound to Westminster. Make sure you're identing all the VORs you're flying, whether it's by tuning in and listening to the Morse identifier or having the ident readout on your unit like the GPS here. We level off at our cruise of 9000. Now, legally, you're allowed to fly up here all you want, but it might be a good idea to bring some supplemental oxygen and monitor yourself with an oximeter since we're planning on being up here for a while. As we fly inbound to Westminster, notice the number two VOR is alive. This is set to the Lancaster VOR, the second one on our route. 
with the radial we're supposed to track inbound set on the bottom of the dial. We'll be using that later. For now, we're just looking at VOR1. When we overfly Westminster, the flag flips and we start a right turn to track outbound along the 056 radial. Let's twist the OBS on VOR1 to set that up top and fly that heading. The next point is Vinny. It's the intersection of the two radials we've set on the VOR1 and 2. So we'll be looking for when both are centered. When that happens, we're over Vinny and can turn slightly left to track inbound along the Lancaster 223 radial. The heading to fly is the reciprocal of 223, which we can just read off the OBS for VOR2, about 45 degrees. We don't need the Westminster VOR anymore, so let's flip the Lancaster frequency on Nav1 active and set the radial into the dial. Down on Nav2, we can set the third VOR on our route, Binghamton, which we've set up on standby, onto active. We can twist the number 2 OBS to the radial we'll be flying inbound to Binghamton, 193. We're too far away from Binghamton to pick up the signal yet, of course. So we fly inbound towards Lancaster. When we're over the VOR on the flag flips, we make a turn to track the 012 radial outbound. This puts us on Victor 499, the long 122 mile segment to Binghamton. We set the Binghamton VOR into NAV 1 standby too. We're going to stay on this for a while, looking for when the number 2 VOR goes active and we pick up Binghamton. The crossover point is the halfway mark between the two VORs, or 61 DME. If you don't have DME, you can use a cross radial from another station. For example, the halfway point is roughly at the MEGS fix, which is on the 076 radial from the Milton VOR. Anyways, we pick up the Binghamton VOR right around the halfway point, so we switch from tracking outbound from Lancaster to tracking inbound to Binghamton, along the 193 radial. As we get closer, we get our descent instructions. It's clear now, so we're told to expect the visual approach. Our route has us proceeding direct to the Ithaca airport from Binghamton. That's on the 335 radial. So we pass over the station, we turn to that heading and set it on top of the VOR. We gain sight of the field amongst the gorges and let ATC know who clears us for the visual approach. We're not on instruments anymore and can simply line ourselves up with the straight in proceeding visually. Don't be afraid of VORs. Get comfortable with how they work on your simulator or up in the plane, and gain a much deeper understanding of how they work and other instrument procedures by enrolling in our IFR ground school linked here and in the description today.